Hello and welcome to another Blender know-how tutorial. In this video we are going to learn how to create this hardwood texture uh, or shader procedurally generated instead of just uh, slapping an image onto it. So this is pretty cool because you can just come into tab or you can just go into edit mode. You can tab into edit mode and you can make this as big as you want and there will never be seams for this and it will scale to whatever size you want without actually scaling like this. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let's let's open up a brand new Blender scene and let's use a plane as this would probably be on a plane in the first place, being a hardwood texture. And make sure you're in Eevee. If you're in Blender 2.8, which it should be at this point, Blender 2.8 release candidate is out and uh, it's good. So. Uh, or at least at this point you might even have just normal Blender 2.8 as it might be released already. Uh, so make sure you're in Eevee, click on this rendered view and then let's uh, open up this right here and go into the shader editor. And to do that just drag from the very corner from this side and you can drag up to make a new thing like that. And if you want to collapse them, uh, drag from the opposite direction. So if you're on this side, drag up and it will combine them. Sweet, so now you have a plane, add a new texture and let's move it over here. Okay, now hopefully this is going to be pretty easy, but essentially what we're going to do is we're just going to um, add a wave texture and uh, throw it into the color, uh, throw the factor into the base color. And watch what happens if you click on, make sure you're in rendered. So you can see that we have this wave texture and it's black and white, just two waves. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And essentially this is not what we want, but we're in the right direction. Um, uh, some tricks that I've learned with this is if we want to um, make this look a little bit better, we can scale this up or down depending on how many ways we want. Uh, however, there's this little trick that I found out. So if we just throw in a texture coordinate, uh, we can take like a cross section of this and stretch it out. Uh, essentially like this, which makes them really long and skinny kind of like what they already are here uh, but it gives us a little bit more options so let's throw in uh, separate actually let's just throw in object into the vector object into vector here and you can see that it, it does a little bit better already but if we shift a and add uh, let's do uh, separate X, Y, Z. We put it in there. Now we've taken the X axis and we've just stretched it out. So comparing those two, the X axis, we've just taken each one of these lines. So if I do this, this line is going to be stretched all the way across. That's what we've just done. Uh, now, uh, a nifty little trick here is we can do Shift A add. Uh, a noise texture. Uh, throw the object onto that vector. And a noise texture looks something like this. If you just go to the color. If you do factor, it'll look just like that but with just black and white. Uh, now what happens if we scale it down a lot? We just have these big black areas and and such like that. And if we crank up the detail, it'll help a little bit. You can see it's a little bit more defined. And if we distort it, you can see we get more of them, uh, but just randomly stretched and warped. And let's make this even smaller here. So I'm probably looking at like 0 0.05. So it looks almost like a cloud. And we want this to be distorted uh, quite a bit. So uh, my values right now are 0 0.05, 16, and 37-ish. Now let's throw let's throw the wave back on here and do a combine 
XYZ and throw it on here. And you know, my, there's not really much different between those, really. Essentially, it's the same. So, what we're going to want to do now here is just throw the vector into the Y. Now, we're just going to sit there and just distort just the Y axis at different increments across the Y. I don't know if that makes a whole lot of sense. Um, if you have questions, go ahead and ask in the comments and maybe I can answer that. Essentially, we're taking the X and Y though, and the X is the same X that was generated, and the Y we're just going to add a texture to. So we're just distorting just this one direction. Okay, sweet. So now that we have that, uh, let's add color. So we can just do a color ramp and throw it in here. And we're going to want uh, a lot of these, so just keep adding them. And then zoom in. And I'm going to just slide these all over the place. We're going to want some more. Okay, and then we're just going to change the color. Uh, actually, maybe something even easier. I'm going to delete all those again. I'm going to change the color of one of these to be uh, a brownish, maybe like 0.87. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Point. Let's drag that back down here. 0 0.087 uh, or 0 0.072. Sounds good. And then we can just drag the saturation and value up and down to get different thing, different uh, saturation and values, dark darknesses and lightnesses of it. So uh, now let's add one, and let's throw this at the beginning here. I'm going to make this one a dark. And you can see it over here, we've already got some cool stuff going on. Uh, but let's add another one. And if we add it close to it, we can actually maybe even, maybe I don't want that, but maybe I want it to be lighter. And you can see in here we have some of that color in there. So now let's add another one. And they don't have to be light, dark, light, dark. They can be like light, dark, darker, lighter, whatever, however you want it to be. So just take a quick second and do that. Sweet. So now that we've got that, you can zoom out and you can see we've got this kind of weird looking pattern. Uh, there's a couple things that we want to do to refine it a bit. Uh, it doesn't look like a floor texture at all yet, but all we got to do is add a Shift A and add a math node in. And we're going to throw it in here to the Y. And it's going to be uh, a divide. And if you just crank this value up, it will become more linear. Uh, so that's that's part of it. Um, oh, also, we didn't play with many of these uh, settings as well. So we want to crank up the distortion so that it's uh, more random. Uh, preferably, this is going to be kind of high. Something in this range. Uh, you can see we've got some weird stuff going on in here. Let's crank up the detail a little bit. That'll fix some of it. Still looks really funky. Um, and crank up the detail scale. And then we can play with distortion again. Maybe come back over here. Tweak some of this again. Okay, yeah. So that's looking a little bit better for me. That looks like some good solid wood floor. So those are my settings as of right now. Essentially, the higher this value, the more linear they're going to be. So maybe, honestly, change these settings first and then go back and change this one. Uh, that seemed to have worked a little bit better for me. OK, so now uh, we're going to uh, change the um, factor here. And we're going to plug it into the normal. And I, for this, I don't know that it actually makes a huge difference whether you plug the factor or the color in, because uh, they're pretty much the same. Yeah. So if you do that, they're the same thing, because it's just black and white. So color is just black and white, factor is black and white. So if we just plug in our factor into normal, you could do Control A and do bump, and plug it in here. 
you'll notice it goes to the normal, just change it to the height. And then you can see that we've got super bumpy hardwood floor. Um, I'm going to try like 0 point, uh, 0 0.09. And then I'm going to look at it on an angle. And I'm also going to maybe do 0 0.05 and then bring my light closer to it so I can see that. Yeah, so if I bring the light all the way down here, you get some texture if you bring it up. I think that's actually pretty pretty good. That's not bad at all. So I'm going to click back on here. Um, as far as other sh stuff that we want to change on this, uh, I think mainly it's just the roughness and I'm just going to decrease it a bit so that it's more shiny. Somewhere in there. Hardwood floor is generally a little bit shinier so that's kind of where that came from. And so if I go to the top view this is what our final outlook output should be for this tutorial. You can refine this in the colors in here a little bit more to be to your liking. As you change each of these, it'll change the color patterns. Um, just as an overview, let's go through these in sections so you can see it on your screen a little bit easier. So I have a texture coordinate going to separate and then combining it and plugging it into the wave texture. So that's the first step. Texture coordinate, separate, combine, wave, and it all goes from the vectors. Uh, then we have an object. Uh, we have the texture coordinate going to the noise texture, going to the divide, and back into the Y input on the combine. Uh, oh, also, I have a scale of 0 0.05, detail 16, distortion of 37-ish. Uh, value 62 here, and then scale of 5, distortion 31, detail 11, detail scale 2. And now over here, we have a color ramp. Uh, so from the wave texture, we have a color ramp, and it goes into the base color. From the wave texture, we also have a bump, and it's got a strength of 0 0.09 and a distance of 0 0.05, and I plugged it into the normal. And the only other value that we changed is the roughness, and I, right now I have it to about 2.9. So good luck with your uh, procedural textures. Hopefully you can get it figured out, and it can look nice. And we'll see you next time on Blender Know How.